What's up, render friends? So recently I worked on a job with a client that does a lot of prototyping and manufacturing. And one of our goals was to make sure that the materials that I created in Keyshot reflected the actual process in which they were manufactured. This meant capturing lots of textures and details that actually happen in real life undergoing different production methods. So one of the biggest challenges was creating a machined aluminum look. Uh, you know, when you take billet aluminum and you put it into a machine and a drill bit kind of cuts um, shapes into it, that's this kind of effect we were going for. And it's been pretty tough in the past. I found out a way to do it though in Keyshot and that's what gave me the idea for this tutorial. All right, so before we kick off this tutorial, I just wanna let you know this is the type of effect we are going for. If you watch this tutorial all the way through, you're gonna learn exactly how to create this very cool billet machined aluminum finish with all these tooling cuts, which really give your metal a much more believable finish. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is head on over to willgibbons.com downloads, pop your email address in here, and that way you can download the appropriate project file so you can follow along with this tutorial. Next, we're going to open that folder of project files, and you'll see some reference images if you wanna look at those in your own time. This is the type of finish we're going after. Now, we want to start off by grabbing our step file and importing that into Keyshot. So I'll go on into Keyshot here, and I'll drag that step file right into our Keyshot interface, and we will take our default import settings. And you see we have this kind of trapezoidal shape with a lot of color on it. So the color is going to denote different surfaces that we want different textures to go on to. So next I want to grab my object in the scene tree. Control D as in Delta to pull this up off the ground and then go ahead and hit the green checkbox. Next, double click on the black or dark gray triangle. We're gonna change our material type to generic. Generic is a newish type of material. It might've been in Keyshot 8, I can't remember, but it allows us to create some interesting effects we cannot do with any other types of material. So if you're not on Keyshot 9.1, uh, you may or may not have access to some of these features, just a heads up. So I'm going to go ahead and change my base color to white, set our metallic value to one, our roughness value to 0.4, our specular value to one, and our anisotropic angle, or sorry, anisotropic value to one. And lastly, our anisotropic direction, we'll set that to linear. Okay, next thing we want to do is open our material graph because we want to put a texture to show the tool path that would have cut these pockets into this piece of aluminum. So I'm going to tab on over to our project files. And what we want is the texture called AA billet pocket top. We're gonna to drag that into the material graph. Let's go ahead and plug this into our generic node, let go in the middle and then connect it to anisotropic angle. Go ahead and select your uh, texture and hit C on the keyboard and this will give us a color preview. Now, mine is set to UV mapping type, set yours to planar if it's not already, and it looks like it's kind of upside down. So we can simply choose flip vertical, and it should fit pretty close to exact. I'm going to use the DPI for size and type in 1200, because I made this custom texture at a size of 1200 DPI, so I know now this is the correct scaling. Again, if you wanna see an in-depth tutorial on how to actually make these textures and things like that, uh, check the link below for my Gumroad uh, premium version of this tutorial as well. So now that this is mapped correctly, we'll hit C to get out of our preview, and we don't see any effect yet. Well, that's because our generic material is looking for an anisotropic angle, and it can't understand what this texture is telling it to do. So we need to add another node between these two. Click on the connector, then right-click, Go down to Utilities and choose Color to Number. And change the Output to, on the Color to Number, to 360 degrees. And miraculously, we see an effect. All this is doing is telling the generic material which direction to reflect the light. And it interprets the grayscale values. And then it assigns a number to them. Uh, again, I can explain this more uh, further in depth in the other tutorial. So we'll go ahead and close this for now. And this is the basic process we will follow a few more times to assign the rest of our materials. 
And then we're going to dial in our materials, make some micro adjustments, adjust our lighting to make sure everything looks as good as possible. Now, for those who are more advanced, this is probably all you need to see at this point. You can go and try to create cool stuff on your own. But if you wanna stick around, uh, go right ahead. I'm going to change my environment to one that has a little bit more contrast. So let's go into our studio environments and let's find our startup balanced, which has a little bit darker tones, a little more contrast. It's not quite too bright. Now let's go ahead and uh, we can actually close that panel for now. Okay, so I'm going to shift left click inside the triangle to copy that to the clipboard. And I'm gonna look on the underside and it's all dark. If we hit S, we can turn off shadows, S on the keyboard, then control shift right click to paste that material as a copy. That means we can now change the orientation of this texture without affecting the top surface. So we'll go ahead and double click to change this material. And then we're going to go into the material graph. And what we'll do is take our texture here, double click it and flip vertical and we should see that they are now aligned appropriately. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and close the material graph and turn our shadows back on with S. Now we're going to do this for the sides, but they're a little bit different. We will shift left click on the top again to copy, control shift right click to paste as a copy. Now we double click the side pocket and we're going into the material graph, but we need a new texture or this shape. So I'm going to tab on over to my project files, go ahead and grab the AA billet pocket side, drag that into your material graph, and we're going to plug this into the input of our color to number. We'll delete the old texture we're not using, and then let's go ahead and hit C to preview that texture. Let's change the mapping type from UV to planar. Yours might be box or it might be planar, I don't know. Uh, it's all black, so let's go ahead and try move texture. And we can see it's not oriented in the right plane. So I'm trying to change it to fit to Z. And now it's going the right direction, but we just have to rotate it 90 degrees. So grab the green circle, start to rotate or drag, and then hold shift to snap into 15 degree increments. So we'll hit the green checkbox to accept that. And you'll notice on the other side, it actually shows the same thing. That's great. That's because we're using planar projection. It projects all the way through. So we'll hit C to get out of that preview of that node. And now we have to worry about the top and the sides. So I'm going to do the top next. So we'll do, we'll close this material graph. Shift left click inside the triangle. Control shift right click on top to paste as a copy. Once again, double click on that top material or surface go to the material graph and back to your project folder. We're gonna grab our AA billet linear 10 millimeter, drag that in. We're gonna replace our texture once again. Delete the old one, hit C to preview the new one. Make sure you are in planar projection and I'm gonna rotate mine 90 degrees. So I'll hit move texture, grab the green circle, hold shift to rotate and green checkbox. C to get out of that preview and we're looking Pretty good. Uh, we're getting close. We need to do these sides and we also have to do the uh, yellow and gray ledges here. And we're gonna do those with a different material, actually just a plain old anisotropic. So I'll close my material graph here. The next thing I'll do is take a second to save. Okay, so next we're going to double click on the yellow sidewall. We're going to change its material type to anisotropic and we'll set our diffuse color to black and our specular to white. And next we're going to choose our roughness X or Y. So in this case, we want the roughness to be going um, to be greater in one of these two directions. We want to stretch the reflections vertically because we're going to have horizontal uh, scratch marks. So we're going to set our roughness Y to be 0.1 and our roughness X to zero. And then what we wanna do is actually get a texture inside here. So let's go to our textures and right click on specular, go down to textures and choose the brushed procedural. Now we have vertical stripes, so we want to change those to horizontal. Click on our texture and the material properties. I wanna change it from UV to planar once again. 
And I want to go ahead and move this texture, although it's too big right now, so we can't really see it. Let's scale it way down to something like two. <clears throat> now we'll do move texture. And I want to rotate this 90 degrees horizontally. So I'll grab the red circle and I'll hold shift and start to rotate. Now we want these lines to look pretty uniform and long. So we'll go down to our length and set them to 10. And I also think they're too big. So I'll set my width to 0.5. Now we have some nice small details and we want them to not have so much contrast. So let's take our contrast down to 0.1. And now we're looking very nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to shift left click to copy that material. Control shift right click to paste it on this ledge down here. And if we go double click on that ledge and we go to our textures and we take our contrast back up to one, you will see that it's not going in the correct direction. It's going in the same direction we set it up in the upper part. So what we want to do is rotate this. So I'll choose move texture. And what I want to do is grab, I think the green, no, let's try the blue circle and rotate 90 degrees. Looks like I'm wrong. <laughs> let's go ahead and undo that. We'll go ahead and rotate on the red axis. How are we looking there? Oh, I'm all sorts of crooked. Guys, I'm losing it. Sorry. Okay. So now we've got the stripes going in the right direction. Let's actually go and make them even longer. So we'll set this from 10 to 20. There we go. And our contrast back down to 0.1. Now we're looking good there. Now, the last thing we have, I think, is this blue side material. And I actually want it to be the same that I used up here inside on the sidewall of these pockets. So I'll shift left click, control shift right click to paste it as a copy. And I think this is going to look a little bit better. We could use the cut pattern that we have here. Uh, we do get some weird effects when we paste it because of these fillets here and kind of the normal direction that they're facing. Um, I think there's a feature Keyshot's working on that will help with that. Uh, but also I think that in a lot of cases you might have this chunk of aluminum that's cut from a tool going around and it may leave these marks. So I think this looks pretty good anyway. Um, now we have to just dial in some of these details so it looks a little bit better. Uh, the other thing I wanna mention is there's going to be a huge impact on how this material looks depending on the environment or the lighting you're using, as well as the surrounding surfaces and materials. So if we go ahead and add a ground plane with control G, double click that ground plane, let's set it to something like diffuse and you can choose a color, whatever you want, you know, add a little bit of a, uh, add a splash of color if you're into that. Now notice it's really going to be reflected onto your material because this is indeed a metal object. So you may want to go with more of a neutral tone. I'm going to go for a dark blue, I believe here. It's kind of like always a safe bet is a dark blue, I feel like. Uh, but you may still have trouble losing part of your material because it kind of blends in there. So again, just, just be aware of that. Um, okay, so to dial in any of these, what I want to do is go ahead and kind of rotate this so it's looking toward the camera a little bit. So I'll grab my model in the scene tree, control D to rotate it or move it. I'll just tilt it forward a little bit. I'm going to go for this kind of three quarter view here. I think this is pretty nice looking. I might take my camera and increase it from 50 to 70. So I have a little bit less perspective on there. Okay, looking good. Uh, if it's too high off the ground, once again, we can always move it. I'm going to go to the global axis and then just drag it down. There we go. So I kind of like this levitating look here. Okay, and now, uh, as mentioned, if we change our environment, we'll have huge or drastically different um, results. So if I hit M to bring back my library and go into my environments and we try something like a few interiors, you'll see immediately very high contrast, very different appearance here. So it's going to come down largely to what you prefer, what you like. Um, it is easy to have this blown out white spot with this material. So I'm going to show you a few ways to control that. Also, one thing to try is to not have too much contrast in your HDRI. So we can go actually into our HDRI and click on the background. 
we can also uh, take our contrast and reduce it quite a bit so it doesn't have that crazy high amount of contrast. So it's getting more kind of gray and washed out. And that's actually helping this material read a little bit better. So it's really gonna be up to you. I'll do negative 0.4 on this. And then uh, lastly, to make some final changes to this, if you'd like, go ahead and double click on one of these middle parts here. And if you want to reduce the strength of this effect, you can always do one of a few things. There's no right way to do it, technically. We can take our anisotropic value and reduce it, say 0.5, and you'll notice this becomes much less strong. It's almost like an opacity slider. You could also technically reduce your roughness. So instead of 0.4, I could try 0.2, and you'll notice the surface gets more shiny and reflective and we see less of that tool path. Again, highly subjective, totally depends on the look you're going for. Uh, when you look at the photos though, you do get a lot of these very bright, high contrast looks on the uh, tool path kind of pockets. So I wouldn't be afraid to use a higher roughness value uh, personally. Now for the top surface, I don't want it to look quite so uh, strong this effect so I'll double click on this top surface and I'll cut my anisotropic value down to 0.5 which I think is gonna work well here maybe even reduce the roughness maybe 0.3 okay that's looking good and then on the side I could do the same thing so maybe uh, anisotropic value goes down to 0.7 maybe not quite as low as it is on the top and what else do we have Maybe for the sides here, if we want a little bit of texture in our, um, our anisotropic material, double click, you could go to your textures and actually also hold Alt and drag this into the bump channel. And that's gonna give us just a little bit of a texture on the edge here. If we get in close with like a macro shot, you're gonna see more of that edge that looks like it was cut, which will look really nice, I think. So there you have it. I don't wanna to go too crazy with this. I don't wanna overwork it, but I did wanna show you guys how you can do this on your own. Now it goes without saying that I had to create custom textures that fit the shape of this model, this 3D model. Now, if you're really interested in learning how you can do that yourself, I'm gonna recommend that you check out the advanced or the more deluxe version of this tutorial. I'm actually gonna show you how I create those textures in Illustrator kind of step-by-step and you can get the project files and everything so you can follow along. And if this reses up, you can actually see the individual cuts, uh, the tooling cuts and all these individual circular swirls. That's this level of detail that we're really trying to capture here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you follow along or if you make something and you wanna share it, please tag me on Instagram. It's at Will Gibbons Design. I'll have that linked up somewhere and um, share what you make because I think this is a super cool technique that I don't think I've seen anyone take advantage of. I don't think I've seen this done with Keyshot before. So yeah, share your results. Let me know how it goes. And if you have questions, uh, just hit me up in the comments below. All right, guys, like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. And until next time, happy rendering.